There are so many ways to make good tools. It's one of the things I like so much about tools development. In this video, I'm going to go back to a topic from another video, but give you a new spin on how to implement it. We will look at how to manipulate points on a path, but this time we'll perform those manipulations using a custom editor tool rather than just coding it into a custom editor's scene GUI function. So let's get into it. First, an introduction to the scene. We have our zombie character, and if I zoom in, we can see him better. There he is. And he plans on roaming this dilapidated house looking for some poor soul to turn. And if you like him or the house I have here, I will leave a link in the description of this video to go pick them up from the asset store. Now we may want to lay out a roaming path for this zombie that the player needs to avoid. So we have a path script set up and in hierarchy, you can see I've already laid down a path here and that has control points creating the route that the zombie will follow. Now we could manipulate those points by simply coming into the inspector and moving the points around to make the differences to make the path move basically. But if you think that's good enough for a tool, then this channel isn't for you. We build tools here and we make development easier. As I mentioned in the intro, we could just add position handle calls within the scene GUI of the custom editor for this path. And if you're interested in that method, I will leave a link in the description to another one of my videos on how to do that. But in this video, we'll create a class derived from the editor tool class, which integrates seamlessly in with the move, scale and rotate tools that you see here in the scene view. And it may be your new best friend for how to work with handles in Unity. So to build this, we'll jump into our project, come into our editor folder, and already have a couple of subfolders, components and navigation, because that's where the script is for the actual path. In here, I'm going to create a new script, and I'm going to call this the path manipulator tool. There we go. And I'll open that up. This isn't a mono behavior, and it doesn't need the mono behavior functionality, and we certainly don't need any of those libraries. Now, what this is actually going to derived from is a class called editor tool. And that comes from the Unity Editor Editor Tools library. And we want to associate this tool with our actual component that we're interested in, in this case, the path. So we'll use the attribute editor tool, which we then say what the tool is. So in this case, we're doing a path manipulator tool and then we'll just give it its association type of path. There we go. And that's associating this tool with this particular component. Okay, now the actual function we want to override here is the on tool GUI. And it's very much like the on scene GUI that you'll find in your custom editor from the previous video. So we come in, we do public, we override and we look for the function we're interested in and it's the onTool GUI and we don't have to click the base. Now, onTool GUI gives us a window. It tells us which window we're actually in working in. And in our case, we're only interested in actually using the scene view window. So we'll check that that's the actual window. Otherwise we won't be bothered. So if we're not the scene view, there we go then we'll just return. There we are. So that's checking, are we in the scene view? Yes, we are, great. Enable the tool GUI to be functioning. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna see what items we actually have collected. And there's a great functionality on this. It gives us the opportunity to basically get targets. And again, if you look at custom editor, you know there's a target variable on there that gives you the target that's actually selected, the component that's selected. And in this case, we get targets, which is just a multiple of that. So we wanna make sure that that target is actually going to be a path. So we'll just do a check, is it a path? And if it is, great, we'll just assign path there. If it's not, we'll continue. Great stuff. Right. Now we want to use some of our path functionality that we don't really need to know about for this particular tool. This is just a video showing you how the tool actually works and how it's built. So we'll just write a for loop and we'll run through this quite quickly. My path functionality has 
the number of control points that are in the path because it uses Bezier curves to actually draw the path so they're nice and smooth. And then we can get one of those control points by just using the control point. Again, the, the actual path code is all custom, but if you're interested in that sort of code, it's in the previous video. Here, we're just looking at the tool. So pretty much like what we do when we're building our tools in our on-scene GUI for custom editors, we begin our change check to see if something's changed. We return a point from the handles because we're going to do move handles, positional handles. So we use positional handle. We take the point that we're interested in, in world space. And for us, we're not bothered about rotating that point. So we're just going to chuck in a quaternion identity there. Great. Now we'll say, you know, end the change check. Oh, that's what's wrong. Editor GUI end change check and if we've got a change then we'll just do an undo because if you're not doing undos in your tools you're doing yourself a disfavor all this undo actually does is basically store the object before you make the change to the object and then if you control z it will go back to that point point. and in this case we're done we just want to set that point back. Now let's see what that editor tool looks like. If I save this script and I jump back into the, into Unity, here we go, and here we go, and I jump to the hierarchy. There we are. I press on my path, and you can see we've still just got the move tool there. But you'll notice that a new thing has arrived up here, and it's this tool right at the bottom. If I hover over it, I get path manipulator tool. And that's the text that you'll see up the top here in the editor tool, ed attribute, path manipulator tool. And this, if I press it, suddenly I'm getting a lot more points that I can move about. And these now control the actual points of the path. So that was super quick to create. And we now have the handles to manipulate our path as we see fit. And you can come in and you could switch back and forth between your move, your rotate, your scale, etc. But if you're a real Unity dev, I bet you hardly touch this thing. I bet you're all using shortcuts. And if you're not, start using them. It will make your life quicker when you're actually developing this. And for all of you, it's all about those WER shortcuts and adding the T and Y for the extra points depending on your layout and the country you're from. So let's add a shortcut for our tool. And in our case, my case here, I'm going to use the U key code as it's looking mighty fine for me with the layout of my keyboard straight after the Y and comes in with all the rest of these manipulating tools. We jump back into Visual Studio. Okay, so we're going to add an attribute here and this attribute is going to be called shortcut. So we come in, we'll type in shortcut, and we'll make sure we've got the correct library, in this case, the shortcut management. And we're gonna write some text in here, a descriptive text, activate path manipulator tool. And we're gonna assign the key code we're interested in. And as I mentioned, in my case, the U is looking mighty fine for this particular tool. And we'll just start writing our function itself. And I'm going to call this one path manipulator. Oh, if I can spell it right, path manipulator tool shortcut. There we are. Now we want to make sure that we've got the correct selection of the path, basically. And then we want to activate the tool we're interested in. So if selection dot get filtered, Make sure we're on a path and then we'll check that the selection mode is top level. And if the length of that is greater than zero. So we know we've got a path. Brilliant. We'll come under tool manager and we'll set the active tool to our path manipulator tool. And that's it. It's that simple to write shortcut. So we'll save. We'll jump back into Unity. And now 
as with all of our other shortcuts and the shortcuts I use here, if I press W on my keyboard, oh, I've pressed off the path. There we go. If I press W on my keyboard, I get my move, E, rotate, R, scale. Now I press U and I'm getting this. So I could be moving this path around and then go, okay, I'm ready and switch over and jump into that and switch back nice and easily using shortcuts. I'm not having to lift my mouse up here. I'm doing it nice and quick. Great, we're really cooking now, but I wanna make things pretty. Why on earth is our icon blank? All the other ones look nice, our icon does not. And this not only doesn't look pretty, but it doesn't make sense. If I select the path, I'm looking at a blank icon, I don't know what it does. So we're gonna to wanna to change that because we never specified it in our code. So we jump back into Visual Studio and in here, we're going to override the variable called toolbar icon. And that's the one that associates what icon is to do with this particular tool. So we'll come in, we'll do a public, we'll do override, and then we'll find toolbar icon. And that's great. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat here. Now you could come in here and you could write in a particular texture that you get from your project and you load in, but I know a GUI content that I really wanna use, that I know looks good and is already in Unity. So I'm going to cheat. I'm gonna call Unity uh, uh, Editor, sorry, Editor, GUI Utility, and I'm gonna call Icon Content under that. And I'm gonna use the lookup for Avatar Pivot. Now what this actually does is this is a whole set of icons used throughout the Unity editor. And if you know the particular icon you're interested in, and you can search, there are plenty of locations that tell you all these icons and give you the pictures. And I'll put a location in the description of this video on where to find those. But if you know what the text is, you can basically look it up and you can use icon content straight off of the editor GUI utility. So if we save, and we come back into our Unity, we will suddenly notice our blank icon switches and it changes to a little move. Super helpful. So now I know my path move tool and it looks like my path move tool. So I've got my move, I've got my rotate and I've got my path move. And I could select that there. And again, I can jump in and start messing with my path. And if the zombie was to hover, suddenly, there we go, it's got some hovering. And with those assets complete, we have a manipulator that seamlessly fits in with the others. And talking of seamless, now's the time to seamlessly move the mouse to the like button. And if you aren't already, consider subscribing to this channel. And if you're overjoyed that the channel exists, consider buying me a coffee on my Ko-Fi link that you'll find in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.